Hey, Trav. What's up, buddy? Oh, not too much. Just doing a little gear shopping here. That's the plan. We're talking about gear shopping today? Yeah, so this is the first time since I was buying gear out of Jaws' trunk at a Planet Fitness that I've seen the genetic for, like, the actual retail version versus mine. It's a little souped up with, uh, with the Lexan, <clears throat> and this blocker is ridiculously light. I don't know if you watched my video, but adding the Lexan, I think, threw about a half a pound into the blocker, which gives it way hotter rebounds. But you notice Hold just on. holding it how much lighter it is. You bought equipment out of Chris Jaws React's truck? Yeah, you didn't see that uh, story a while ago. It uh, yeah. met me at like a Planet Fitness somewhere in the hood in Detroit, and I was buying gear out of his trunk. He was a Planet Fitness kind of guy. I knew it. <laughs> yeah, but so anyway, it's the first time holding the optic block or the genetic four blocker after getting mine. And uh, I love the Lexan, so I definitely consider people to look into it, but after going back and forth, the weight difference is noticeable, and I can definitely tell why why that option is in stock at retail. Most people prefer the lightweight. So you got any gear you want to see while I'm here? I wouldn't mind talking vapor. I know we've been talking a lot of vapor lately, personally. Um, also, maybe we should, we should address if uh, we actually like each other. Some people like to, to ask me a lot if we hate each other or not. Uh, you can address that. I'll see if I can find some vapor gear. I know. No vapor gear? I got some vapor. So this is the 1X in its full glory. Obviously, no 2X gear. Won't see that at retail shelves until the spring. So what do you want to see on some on some vapor? Let's talk, uh, let's talk leg channels. I don't think there's enough love... Uh, for specifics of like vapor versus the CRS leg channels. Yeah, so I think you and I both had 1S gear. I had two different sets actually, had a XL and a medium, couldn't find a large use uh, when I was starting the goal net and was on a pretty tight budget. And then I demoed some 1X gear for uh, at an own the moment store. And that was my biggest takeaway between wearing both sets of gear is that I definitely favored the 1X strapping style. It's a lot more streamlined. Um, I personally find the CRS straps could only be worn loose, and I'm a guy who likes a tight leg channel. Um, so I definitely preferred that about the Vapor and ended up modding the 1S gear that I had and turned the CRS into a professor strap with some custom straps from Factory Mad. So if we take a look at the Vapor, it's real simple. You basically got the Y strap down here, which can be moved anywhere. You know, if you want to wear it a little bit more up like that, like a professor strap, more neutral. You can wear it lower, which is why. No, I, I found the. Fit. I found yeah. that professor like Y strap. You know, there's not enough appreciation for it online for like the amount that it really dials in, uh, like everything that you're wearing. So I, I too got to demo the one X to like all the vapor stuff at the uh, Bower and Lawn Store in Minneapolis back in March, whatever it was last year. And I found that Y strap made a really, really big difference. Like, like the CRS was good, like the 1S stuff, but the Y strap on the, the Vapor strap instead, I found it really, really toned things you know, or dialed things in, shall we say. Yeah, for sure. And did you go elastic across in that one or elastic down? Did you go there or there? Yeah, so uh, it's all in the video. We did elastic across the knee. Um, for the 1S stuff, I couldn't get used to dropping it below the calf. I had to go across the knee cradle. With the vapor stuff, it was the opposite. I had to go um, down to, to the, the calf. I found that worked really well. Uh, if I ever did go to a vapor setup, I'd go, like we talked about, and then drop down the, uh, the calf strap down. Hey, I think your fire alarm is going off, by the way. I've been told the store's not on fire, so let's just roll with it. And apologize to everybody in the Fuck audience it. in the background. Yeah, so nice narrow leg channel, got some Nash material in there, so super soft. One of the differences between 1X and Supreme is this has the 45 degree knee block, um, and this is also a nice cushion surface. Uh, this is basically, they've taken this piece, and that was one of the big upgrades between the 1S and the 2S, was going with this more plush, more comfortable style knee block, but the actual shape is different where it's square, and maybe if we can find some 2S skier, I will... We'll point that out next, and maybe after that, they've got a coveted mask here. You can talk we, through that. We can talk and let me know how you like the coveted. Real quick, before I forget. 
What's that? Um, the knee block. We can talk about that real quick. Maybe if you can grab yeah. a set of two S pads, we can kind of uh, so talk I'm about seeing that. Some one S and some colors looked a little yellowed from the shelf here, and some. S two nines doesn't look like we're stocking two S or maybe they're such a hot product they're selling out I'm not sure. Oh, hockey fan kid, yes, we'll be at the uh, Let's Play Expo in Minneapolis this year. We're excited for that. Oh, all right. I think I got what you were looking for. Excellent. So here is the two S pad. So as I mentioned there, that is the newer knee block, so kind of the more cushy style like the vapor but a larger square knee block versus the vapors 45 and what did you want to go over here i found that uh you know obviously going from the 1s knee block and again only use the vapor for like half an hour maybe less um but i found that that 45 degree cut out the knee block made a big difference more so for like my narrow style of butterfly so if i ever was to go to the custom order i'd be sticking more towards that 45 block um so if you got a wider butterfly maybe go with uh the stock 2s knee block if you have a more narrow one like mine the vapor knee block might be more for you, just my two cents. Yeah, and I've got uh, angled on my uh, my genetic fours right now. Uh, I'm trying to, all the gear like almost blurs together right now. <coughs> trying to think what else I've had that on. All right, so let's go check out buckets. So actually, I take that back. I thought I had... There it is. So Optic had 45 degree knee block and Genetic has the square knee block. So knew I had it on a set of pads recently. So another example of two different knee blocks. We've got multiple lines. So this is my first time ever seeing a coveted bucket up close. And I know you've been testing one recently. So why don't you tell me what you think about this? Well, I don't want to spoil too much about it, but one thing that really shocked me off the bat, so uh, you can get a couple different models of the coveted bucket, for those of you who do or do not know. Um, the one that I have, <clears throat> it's the, uh, the 906. It's basically an exact clone of the Bauer Profile, so the 960, 960 XPM Max. Uh, same look, same fit, um, some differences with the foams, weight. Um, feels a little bit different, like slightly. Um, I don't want to get into too much because like, I was saving all that for a video review and a written review. All I can say is that uh, I really am enjoying it. Um, now, if it's in regards to, I think the big question would be, is it worth uh, your money as opposed to the 960 XPM? Because they're almost the exact same thing. You're spending a good amount of money. So I mean, I still don't know the answer to it, and hopefully I can figure that out um, you know, closer to when I throw up a review in April or May. And if anybody follows my stuff, they know I'm not really into clones. You know, if I want the Bauer style bucket, I would get a Bauer. But here's another model coveted that's a little bit more of their own kind of unique shape. So I'm not going to bother and try these all on. But definitely if I were to look at a coveted, this would probably be my, my speed uh, more than the, the 960 style. The pretty cool exposed carbon in there. I mean, just looks, looks like a sharp helmet. And the other mask here that's new I've never seen, which is kind of fun because uh, I'm friends with Joe from Bandit's Goalie School, is the Mass Marvel. Have you ever seen one of these up close? I have not. So they've got, I think, three different models now. This is the Assassin, which kind of the same thing. If I ever looked at a Mass Marvel, I wouldn't get their 960 style, but this is a nice kind of, you know, more of their design shell with the round holes. Uh, more of a generic thing. It's got a pretty beefy center bar there, as you can see. Got the exposed carbon fiber made in Canada. And this has a cream foam, which fortunately holding, talking, and squeezing is a bit complicated, but it's pretty supple, supple cream foam in there. You ever wore a mask with any of the more engineered style foams, like uh, BTX or some of the CCM? No. Uh, I, I did find... Um, so the, the coveted has a different style of foam. It's kind of typical, like your blocky, uh, like beige foams. Like so, like the um, so like the original 960 had. Found I found with those masks, especially over time, even like the the enemies, like the enemy style of masks, the, the foams that over time would start to unstick and they'd start dropping down, um, and everything would kind of like fit not great. Now with at least with the 960 XPMs, everything is screwed into the cage, so everything it, it holds itself together. Found that's worked a lot better. Um, the coveted also has, like I said. Has really good foams. 
Yeah, that's uh, the newer NMEs have that same style as well, where the uh, the foam's taken out. If you actually check the goldnet.com today, wrote an article um, talking about mass foams, and maybe that's something that's a bit overlooked. Everybody's so focused on shell quality, shell makeup. Um, so here's some sticks for people to play the game the wrong way like you do. If you've yeah, been if missing I, Louisville, I, I got one for you. I'd like to point out one thing from the comments. Somebody, uh, Wonger mentioned, uh, new 960 XBM foam soaked too much in the cheek area. Yes. Uh, if I have an extended ice time, uh, this is going to actually sound gross, if I dip my head into my chest and kind of push, like sweat will start dripping out of the mask, like as if you're like running on a rag. That's one thing I really don't like about the 960 XBMs compared to the 960 last generation because that didn't happen. Uh, DJ John or D Johnson 33 asks, are mask marbles an exact clone of the OTNY? Is that true? I have no idea. Um, I don't believe they may have some overlap, but Otme and Sport Mask um, are the same company or partnered. I'm not quite sure if the proper term is there, but I don't believe Mass Marvel has any association with them at all. And Mass Marvel has the three different models. They've got the one I just showed, the one with the triangular vent holes, and they've got the 960 clone. So if you had some real style and you actually knew how to create good content, you would wear this in a game. This is a Bauer Reactor, I want to say three, there we go. And this has got to be from like 98, 99, I mean 2000 at the at the oldest. You were in your 40s by then, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah all, all my trips for John are uh, face related, but I, I can't talk about that because nobody needs to know what uh, he looks like, so. Um, yeah, and I'm not anywhere close for, to 40, just for the record, even though we won't get much close than that. So you can say I whipped some sticks out. So I am one of the few people on Earth that is not a <coughs> one guy. You can get some info on the new Warrior V1 Plus Pro coming out next year. And just trying to plan ahead for some future <coughs> sticks. So I was creeping on curves. I bought a Mrazic with my CR1. And that wasn't bad, but I got a paddle that was too short and just couldn't get used to it. But I'm thinking if I go V1 Plus, I'm going to go with a Mrazic model again. But instead of my normal 25-inch paddle, I'm going to one up to a 26-inch paddle. Someone just asked a question. What is the – and this is actually something we were talking about, I think, last week or the week before. What is the best knee protector uh, that's not too bulky? Uh, yeah, let's – let me go through real quick with the stick size, then we'll jump there because it's actually probably the last thing we'll show and then we'll wrap up. Um, but yeah, I am in the market for knee pads. And if you follow me on the goal net, you'll see I'm kind of on a, a knee pad bender, we'll say this year. And I'm going to try probably most of the knee pads in the market. I've been using the Bryans for about the last year and they've been pretty solid. But, you know, my account is about testing gear, creating content around gear. So I need to mix it up and try some different stuff. So just for reference, this is a 26-inch Warrior next to a 25-inch CCM. And the price curve as well to note. And they line up pretty close. So that does confirm one of the things I came here to see, that if I go Warrior again, I'm going to go 26-inch paddle instead of my normal 25. And if anybody's wondering height, I'm about 6'2". And Trav, I think you're even bigger than me, and you prefer the shorter, the 25-inch paddle as well. No, I actually went up uh, this year using the um, 26 this year in Bauer. <clears throat> Why did you go up? A uh, couple ac – oh, actually, that actually works great. Somebody just asked, what is the best stick for shooting? That's the first one stone. So uh, I found that with the Bauer sticks, um, specifically the 1S line, uh, my puck handling, my shooting, my passing, all that stuff had never been better. Um, the Supreme the 1S and you know, the 2S Pro line of sticks – they have a level of torque uh, when you're passing the puck and you're shooting it that I've, I've never seen in a stick before. It, it's almost as if, like, like you have somebody there kind of, bless you, love them. Um, it's almost like you have somebody there behind you kind of guiding you, like, like helping you, uh, you know, get the puck off your stick, especially if, if you're adding some height, if you're just looking for power, whatever it is, if I'm a 1S and a 2S Pro, they just do so many things well. And so for me, the reason why I was using a 25 was I found I'm making 95% of the saves in a game on my knees and my butterfly. You know, being 6'5", I don't really have, I can get away with that. 
Um, so the 25 is great for um, you know, the amount of height I want on my stick and my butterfly making stick saves. But I asked myself the question, of, okay, well, I have to get down a bit more being so tall when I'm puck handling. Would that extra inch make life a little bit easier when puck handling? And I threw my custom order with an extra inch on, uh, kind of a gamble because you're blowing a 1000 bucks on sticks. And I found that extra inch did make a big difference. And it hasn't hurt uh, stopping pucks, like deflecting pucks with stick usage. Um, obviously, you're getting an extra inch of coverage. So if, say, if you're opening up Johnny Quick style to try to get a puck diving, you get the extra inch of coverage, which is nice. Um, but puck handling, as far as that goes, it's, it's actually gotten better. Um, so that was, I guess, in, in you know, long story short, why I went an extra inch longer. And Bauer 1S slash 2S Pro being the best sticks in the market you can get um, as far as puck handling goes. And for me, it's more, and again, this is where it's good to get different opinions. Everybody's got a different take on things. I'm not a great puck handler. I'll be the first person to admit that. Um, but for me, it's about a curve that when I get the puck anywhere on my stick, I can just throw like a quick sauce pass or a quick chip up the boards. And that's why I love that CCM P2 with the new price pro, top, pro stock curve that I've been using. Because I just find like anywhere I get the puck on the blade, I can just make a real quick chip pass and get myself out of a lot of trouble. Um, and flex profile wise, the P2 is, I want to say similar um, to a 1S stick. Unfortunately, goalie sticks a little bit tougher to test, but this is one thing I can say to kind of stay tuned to in the future. And you might start to see some companies continue to come out with softer flex goalie sticks to help you pass the puck. And one thing is we kind of close up this little section in the stick segment. I mentioned, you know, I used a 25-inch CCM right now and ordered a 25-inch Warrior and why we didn't see too much content on the CR1. Granted, I'm going off the toes and not the heels, um, but you can see there's a pretty big paddle height difference there, and I believe it's due to the lie of the Warriors. So um, if you're coming from a different brand of Warrior, if you can get over to a hockey shop and, and compare your, your existing stick to that one, I recommend it. And like I said, said earlier i'll definitely be going 26 inch and either a mirazic or the quick curve quick kind of looks p41 ish which i've been using in my sherwood which isn't too bad as well for those little passes i talked about all right Trav, let's wrap this up let's go to knee pads so these are the ones i'm currently using and um, like I, I said I one last quick thing on uh, sticks I, I used the ccm premier one i had uh two of them i, I could not for life me make a pass just way too stiff Super heavy, not enough weight. I found that the True, the uh, Hair Trigger 6.0 that I had last year, was similar in weight and feel, but it had this torque that just made it from, say, the CCM being here and the Bauer being up here, the True being probably right about there. Anyway. Um, yeah, and the P2s the... are lighter, just so you know, too. I mean, the P2 is around 710 <laughs> grams, and for me, 700 is that threshold where they get real light. Um, you know, 1S and 2S and BPM 150, the only ones that really crack that. Um, but yeah, P2 is, is much lighter as well, but I'm with you. I mean, I think that 2S is, you know, I gave it the most engineered product award when I did them. I mean, I think that's one of the most high tech products to come out in a while. And I bought one of Fazio's sticks and couldn't get used to those rounded shoulders, even though the curve was right. And that's why I wouldn't see so much content with that stick, but huge fan of those and kudos to Bauer for getting creative with how they designed it. All right. So these are the ones I'm wearing currently. We can see how narrow the knee is. So this is kind of what I'm basing it off of. I'm definitely going to be trying some Warriors at this point, but might wait to see um, new spring offerings. Not too sure. If I jump on the Warriors, I think I would get the Pro model. Looks like I'm only seeing the seniors here. But you want to know what else also caught my eye, which is crazy, is the CCMs are, you know, the bottom of their line. But I kind of like um, the knee looks a bit wide, but I kind of like the simple design and plastic, you know, up there. And then it's also got that lower um, anchor style strap to help hold them up. So I don't know if I run out of options in the pro gear, I might might dabble down there. I'm not one. I've got a wide enough butterfly and I have tall enough pads. That I don't really get hit in the knees. I use knee pads more as a, an airbag, I'll call them. It's one of those safety features. If a puck ever does get through, I want them. But secondly, um, for cushioning, you know, I'm in the butterfly every shot and I use very hard knee blocks that help me with my seal. So I want to make sure I'm getting the, uh, you know, nice, soft, cushy landing when I go down. So what are you wearing for knee blocks? Yeah, so um, a couple things with knee blocks to keep in mind. 
Um, I saw a couple of people leave comments about, uh, you know, I don't bother wearing knee pads, I don't need them, why bother? Um, I used to be the same way. I used to think, like, I'm very hesitant to change. You know, obviously trying gear has kind of opened my eyes up a bit more to being open-minded to try stuff. Um, but I actually got a skate cut on my knee, which is what actually led me to get into a pair of knee pads. Um, one, one day I just said, okay, I had enough. Like, I, I don't want to get hit with pucks there anymore. I don't want to get hit with skates. It just makes life easier. Especially with a narrow butterfly, obviously my knee's more exposed. Um, Uko Pekalukunen from the uh, Team Finland World Junior game, or Team, uh, I think Ingle said he doesn't wear knee pads. Like, it's absolutely insane the fact that you don't. Um, but as far as knee pads go, first off, uh, protection. Uh, I, think, I think everybody should have them. It's just nice other protection. Uh, two, they also add height to your butterfly. So obviously depending on the style you use, I haven't been able to get used to the um, uh, newer style, like the 1X, or the Vapor, the Brines, the Warrior knee pads. So I've sold all mine. I've been stuck with my uh, Bauer NXG Pros from like five years ago. Um, they're really thick, they're like a European style, like heavier knee pad. And, they're th and with the thickness too, keep in mind that also adds height in your butterfly. So say if I'm using those as opposed to no knee pads, I'm probably gaining about half an inch in coverage. Also, I'm losing height going down on my butterfly from 6.5, but having that extra half inch can be the difference between a save and a goal. If it hits my shoulder, maybe pops up, goes in, or maybe goes out. So one thing to keep in mind as well. Um, but I've been sticking with the uh, Bauer NXT Pros for the last four or five years. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's a great point too. And you actually just primed me for a future post um, in an unreal manner, but I've actually got a picture of his knee pads from the world juniors and they're heavily modded but they're posted to a private account so i'm waiting to get some some approval um before i post post those up so one of the things i love about bauer blockers is they've got that huge pad behind the wrist that's a mod i've been getting um, on my brian's i feel like it gets the board further away from your hand which gives you better rotation um gets the blocker out of your way when you're playing the puck but no, I'm with you on knee pads. I think they're a really uh, underrated piece of gear. There's a lot of reasons to wear them. These are the ones I've been messing with for a little bit here, the Bauer 1X. These have a ton of good features. There's one um, reason I'm not loving them lately. As, as I mentioned earlier, I have really hard knee blocks, my pads, that help with seal. And the knee landing area I find is firm in these knee pads, and that's kind of a bad combo. So these would be really good for somebody that has a softer knee block. We've got firm knee block firm knee pads. Um, that's a recipe for bruising, but the strapping system on these is unreal. They stay up like a dream um, without any garter belt for me. And even though this kneecap looks big, it's like exactly in the right place so that when I go down, you see the Bauer and the Curve logo and my knee's protected, but it doesn't interfere with the butterfly. Um, so if these had a slightly softer landing, so they worked better with my pad combination, I'd be all over these. So these are recommended for you um, you know, if you've got a softer knee block or your knees are a little bit more resilient to, uh, to a hard landing. You know anything about Vaughn knee pads? No, I don't venture in Vaughn at all, except for chest protectors. But... Let's see. Let's see, SLR Pro Carbon kind of looks like that Supreme style design with the, the three straps, lower knee. I would say this seems very wide, you know, for somebody that wants a wide one for a narrow butterfly, some extra coverage. So it might be up your alley. Hey, uh, hey put, put that knee pad back in the box. You got employees that are working hard, eh? <laughs> it's back in. Costing them labor there, bud. There we go. All right. Oh, wow. We're going to end on this. Look at this gem. I don't see anything, John. Don't you worry. Oh, the Heatons. Wow. If anybody needs a Heaton Junior Gold Jock, shoot us a DM, and I will seriously buy this and mail it to your house as long as you promise to Venmo or PayPal me. That <laughs> is an unreal find. Those came right. out uh, back in your senior hockey days, eh? Yeah, back when, uh, you know, I was winning, winning Stanley Cups and all sorts of fun stuff. Anyway, we... Uh, whoop. You got anything else to talk about in the stream, or are we concluding from there? Uh, no, I think it's been fantastic. You got anything else you want to see? Mm. Chesties, maybe? Talk a little chesty. Vapor pants? Um, yeah, I got to warn you, I am running low on juice here, too. So keep that in mind. This just might abruptly end on you. But, yeah, let's go see. It's one of the best things. I actually bought my first goalie mask ever as a kid here. I came to... Uh, goalie camp at Michigan State um, and went to Piranis and got my first goalie mask, probably a different location than this one. I can't remember where, 
but always have a soft spot for piranhas. But the other great thing is for whatever reason you've seen, they just seem to have some crazy old stuff laying around the store. So it's always a treat to come in here and see a junior heat and gold jock or a Louisville gold stick. All right. What do you want to see here? Let's see the vapor. St- well, I already had the vapor chesty. I was hoping more so a uh, 2S chesty or vapor pants. I was looking at some vapor pants the other day. Hey, uh, Johnny, somebody wants to know, do you have the Frederick Anderson spec extra padding on the blocker uh, to make the palm a little thicker? I know you already talked about that, but I'm assuming he was in the stream when we talked about that. Uh, the, everything we're looking at here is just stock retail. So Freddie's got a special. Oh, no, you're talking Craig Anderson, I think. Yeah, I've got on my blocker, um, Craig Anderson, I think it's one piece of extra padding between the back of his blocker palm and the back of his blocker board, and I double up and get two. And it's pretty similar feel to either the Bauer blockers um, at retail have that extra pad between the uh, the back of the board and your back of your hand. There you go, John V. Nineteen eighty-seven. Question answered. All right. So this is the two S Pro. It's a little bit more of a streamlined unit compared to the one S, where it's not true NHL spec, but I believe it's going to be a little bit more of a shaped profile than the one S uses uh, power light um, is the material on here got the sanitized 37.5 in there um, got some of the armor foam again noting the power light in the arms so this is a unit uh, i was hoping to try last spring got some curves still in the arms so super high tech and got some pour on here in the elbows so every possible one of bowers Every possible one of Bauer's tech is basically integrated into the CNA. Um, I was hoping to try one of those last spring, but didn't work out. And I've been using the Shield 2, which, loving that. Um, kind of like you said with the mask, I won't share too much because I got some review content. And X900. I think vapor pants are kind of hard to come from or come by. Nope. The See, wow. These are insanely light. Like oh, these, the granted, I have pro stock pants, so they are probably beefier than your average Joe. I mentioned the love of Piranis. Two pairs of Cohos and some Eddie pants. So the stuff you find around the corners here is absolutely unreal. But uh, these are the 1X, so I have not worn these, but these are ridiculously light. They have an internal belt? Uh, they've got like a half belt. It's, uh, just in the back area and it's adjustable. Um, but that actually connects to the front belt. So this front belt here runs through the inner belt. It's not the other style where you have like an inner and an outer belt. You got one jet, one giant oh. belt here. Cause on my one S when I take the belt on the inside and then I take it out of the holes and I just do it to the front or the inside. So it's kind of, I made my own internal belt with that. One sneaky feature on these I like besides the curve is the trim on these. Um, I don't know exactly what that material is. It's probably a form of plastic like in the nylon family, but just make sure your pants don't fray from, you know, knee elastic Velcro, uh, knee lock Velcro on your pads, anything like that. You get a lot of fraying in the edges here. So minor, not a reason to like buy pants or not buy pants, but definitely a super nice touch to add that to the pants. Yeah, I mean, these are like ridiculously light all right Trav I gotta run you got anything else that's it let's call the stream thank you everybody for tuning in and uh, I don't know see you sometime soon all right Golnet signing out